Hey, what's going on, Archons? Welcome to a Coach's Collection Bad Deck Edition. That's right. I'm uh, following up on my comment yesterday during my key thoughts where I said I had a bad deck and I wanted to explain to you why I had a bad deck. Why is this? Why is this deck bad? Let's find out, folks. So this deck is interesting. First off, just looking at the stats. I know I'm showing the SAS score, which I normally don't do during these types of videos, but uh, I thought, why not today? So the deck, as you can see, doesn't have the worst stats here when you look at the normal things we're looking at, board control, ember control, ember generation. 17 is not great, but it's not bad. We're going to, we're going to, that's what I'm going to clarify, but it's not great. And there's not a lot of creatures. This is the oddest stat, I think, for this deck. Uh, the Sci the Sayada of Steelfen is that it has 14 creatures with only 11 Ember Pips, which is kind of weird, which generally means there's going to be artifacts that basically don't come with uh, Pips on it. That's, that's pretty much the gist. When you have, or you have also you're having, that means uh, action cards that have more to it than just the Ember, which means they somehow generate Ember generally when that happens, So or are very powerful. So Otter Encoder in this deck is obviously the thing that stands out the most, I think. Uh, and this one happens to have a draw pip and a capture pip on it. So that kind of sucks because those are two great things to have. And they're both on one card that doesn't cycle. So there's that. And this deck can cycle because of Auto Encoder. I would hard mull for Auto Encoder because I think it is uh, quite important with some of the cards that are in this deck. Uh, the causal loops can be great for maybe one turn you're saving something, and then the turn after when you pull them back, you can just pitch them. Um, I look at it kind of in a short-term game gain, long-term loss sort of capacity. So short-term, you're like, you need something, so you're using the causal loop to archive something else in another house. And then long-term, you're pulling back your causal loop and the other card, and it's either the other card is going to be used, or you're pulling back the causal loop to use with an auto encoder, potentially discard. So that's kind of how I was using it. Uh, that being said, the causal, the the auto encoder aspect with causal loop, I, I think causal loop's an interesting card because you're archiving it and causal loop. Now there's obviously the dimension door Krizap plays where you could just save causal loop in that for the future uh, and then hopefully you get your auto encoder by then so you could use it in the regards of okay i'm gonna store something for later within logos because it doesn't have much effect now or you can use it to further draw up at the end of your turn but then you're gonna have a less inviting turn later on because you're gonna have to take the l on one of those um the bouncing death cork unfortunately kind of sucked uh, it was great in terms of sometimes you just needed to get rid of something, but with such a low creature count, it really inhibited your ability to do what you needed to do in the end because you would not have any creatures to use. Uh, Animator is a cool card. I don't have a lot of experience with this. I definitely misplayed this card a little bit due to the fact that uh, I wasn't animating my other houses like I haven't had the experience but it's a really cool thing and the reason why I also like this animator is it provides the ability to use the capture pips after you've animated your um, your stuff but unfortunately there's only auto encoder has the capture pip uh, so that is the sad panda side of things um, aside from that this has krizap which is fantastic because there are um, because there's low creature count I found I did a lot of times with logos have like my bot booked in adaptoid infomorph out and then that gave me the ability to just go boop and just pop some stuff which was really nice um positron bolt again a lot of like this is this was really nice a little bit of damage there and adaptoid i never got a single use out of adaptoid adaptoid like not once was i able to use it it was always either killed or it just didn't stay so that was unfortunate uh bot booked in you know these cards. Sorian, this is where things got interesting. Sorian House was more of um, like the Logos board never stuck. 
Sorian, the Axiom of Grisk was great, having Beware the Eyes, which also had a draw pip on it, uh, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, it had a draw pip. Uh, was really nice because you could do some fun things with like a Curse of Vanity if you had it with damage. There was also, uh, no, sorry, you could just exalt their creature and then pop it. There's Hedonistic Intent, so that's the flank creatures. Obviously, doesn't work in this scenario. Um, so there was there's a bit of exalting here, which worked in some ways nicely. Uh, like I mentioned yesterday, getting to humble your opponent's creature. And then Axiom of Grisk, so that's a great way you can do some things. Uh, and then we had just Siren's Horn, which I felt was actually pretty relevant in this deck. Unfortunately, it didn't stick around because there's Capture Pips in this deck in the tune of 5. Um, Console Primus also had the Capture Pip, I believe. Um, so that was, uh, that was, yeah, it did. Had the capture pip and then Dark Centurion. I never got to use Dark Centurion, unfortunately. Move one from a creature to the common spy if you do ward that creature. This would have been great. Uh, I would have been really happy to move these off of my creatures and ward them, but I never got the chance to do that. They were always taken out, so that sucks because there's a uh, two, four, five creatures here in Sorian. So that was great. Pterodactyl and Galeotops, big bodies to put stuff on. I used Pterodactyl actually as one of my main capture tools. To then throw on Siren's Horn just because once I get it going, it's going to be able to deal a lot of damage and kind of do further board control, but also be a big body to, to live through those fights and be able to use the Siren's Horn with Ember on it. So that was a big play for me there, but I really enjoyed using Humble to remove um, Ember off of creatures to make the Axiom of Grisk work. That was really fun. Uh, Diplomacy. Uh, I mean... With the low creature count, there's a lot of times I wasn't using Sorian to use any of my creatures. So this actually worked out where I could potentially use this for my opponent. But the problem is if I hadn't got my Grisk yet, I'm essentially just setting up a play where that doesn't work. And you had to be cautious of Faust and things like that. So you couldn't just play it. Sometimes it became more worse than it already was. Now Shadows. This is where thing the deck actually could burst and shine was in Shadows. Um, look over there to steal, obviously. Ransack was so unfortunate because it has a capture pip. And that kind of sucked when you have a stealing engine that can keep going as long as you're discarding. So that was really unfortunate. Uh, Sack of Coins was great. It was great ping damage, get rid of wards, all those sort of things. Um, just more removal. Again, lots of removal here. Tempting Offer, um, oddly enough, was really nice if a creature was warded because then you could get the effect of popping wards and they don't get the the ember gain which is pretty fun uh there's also you could do it so um if there's a lot of ember like if you've been putting ember on your opponent's creature a lot so the the proposition of them gaining an ember you're gaining more so that was really nice obviously uh bone nithing had the draw pip seeker needle had the damage pip which was kind of cool with Seeker Needle. And then Macus Asp had two capture pips. Macus Asp was the hardcore target every time. It never got to fight. It was literally taken out with direct damage always before. It was wild. Uh, Nexus, again, a little bit of artifact stuff you can deal with, which is fun uh, to shut down your opponent's artifacts or um, just, you know, get some benefit. And then Double Shoulder Id for protection. Xeno Thief for cycling, which is really nice. And then you had the Bone or Venom, uh, Bone Rot Venom for um, whatever was needed, basically. Uh, a problem creature that you didn't want used over and over again to your detriment. So, I mean, this deck doesn't seem bad on when you go over it, but all the creatures were in shadows, and there was two, four, six of them only. And then you had five in Saurian, and then three in Logos. Um, so you wanted to call the, the shadows, but you couldn't really, the shoulder ribs were good for reaping. You couldn't fight. Um, that's where the Saurians came. And the deck just, it doesn't gel is a problem with this deck. It just kind of comes, everything doesn't work well together. It's just a little, eh. That's the unfortunate thing with it. So that's why I did not have the success I was hoping with this deck, but a low creature count, low ember count is just a bad start to begin with. But it could take care of boards. That's the one good thing. It could take care of boards and it could steal burst with shadows, which is quite nice. 
So that's this deck. Tune in on Saturday. I'm going to be starting a little bit later than normal. I have to take my dog to the vet in the morning to get checked out. And uh, as a result, there may be some overlap for my start time. But as soon as I'm back from that, I'm going to get going. And you can check my Twitter for that. So we'll see the Sadaya of Steelfen in action during that time. Because there is some cool things here. But for some reason, it just doesn't come together. So we will explore this further when we get to the stream. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. As always, may your ember never be stolen and your keys forge properly. Have a good one.